Hi guys, thanks for joining us for another video from the workbench here at RC Juice. Today we're going to talk about ESC calibration. ESC calibration is another topic that we get a lot of emails about, a lot of questions about, and a lot of times when somebody gets a new ESC, if they're having trouble getting the thing going, it can usually be traced back to the calibration procedure. Uh, for some reason, a lot of guys think that the ESC calibration is something complicated or something that you don't always have to do, but calibrating the ESC, it's, it's always a super simple thing to do. It, it's, it's quick and it's something that really needs to be done in order for your ESC to work properly. Uh, so what you're doing when you calibrate the ESC is you're simply telling your ESC what your full throttle point is, what your full break point is, and what your neutral point is on your radio input. With so many different types of radios out there, as far as the actual signal that's coming from your radio, it can vary quite a bit between radios. So your ESC really has no way of knowing what the range of your radio input is until you actually go through the calibration procedure. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of times the ESC won't even work at all if you don't go through calibration. So some ESCs, there, there's a few exceptions out there, some of the lower grade RTR type ESCs will work without calibrating and sometimes high end ESCs will happen to work uh, without calibrating them but you can really be missing out on a lot of performance on the ESC or you can have other issues that will arise if you don't go through the whole calibration process. Um, and also, one of the reasons that sometimes the ESC won't arm at all is that, once again, one of those points that you're telling the ESC is your neutral point on your radio. So as a safety, your ESC typically will never arm. It, it won't even get to the point where it will send power to the motor until it sees a neutral signal from your radio. Reason for that is for safety. If for some reason you happen to have some throttle applied to your radio while you're turning the car on, the last thing you would want is for your car to take off as soon as you actually power up the ESC. So until it sees that neutral input, the ESC is not going to arm in the first place. Uh, so one way that I like to try to visualize this is with carburetor linkage. So if you were to set up your throttle linkage on a carburetor on a car without adjusting it, it's very possible that you could give the car full throttle and your throttle plates would not be opening up all the way inside your carburetor so you wouldn't be getting full power. So here we have a little Traxxas nitro carburetor for you guys to try to kind of illustrate this. So inside there you can see the, the little throttle plate moving back and forth. So if for some reason you're falling short on the full throttle travel your throttle plate may only be opening, you know, 70%, 80%, so you're not getting full power out of the ESC. And then the other problem that can happen is what would be on a carburetor, if it was adjusted too tight, so say when you give it half throttle, the carburetor would already be at, at full open, wide open throttle. The problem is that you're taking that full travel of your radio output and you're condensing it down to a much smaller section of travel. So essentially you would get a very touchy ESC. So instead of your throttle input being spread out over the, the, the whole range of, of the trigger movement, you might be getting from neutral to full throttle in this much travel here. So it's going to make your ESC very touchy. So as far as performing the actual calibration itself on your ESC, the procedure can vary between different models of ESCs, different brands of ESCs, but you're still doing the same thing on all the speed controls. You're telling it what your full throttle, full brake, and full neutral points are. So before you calibrate, you always want to make sure that your throttle trim setting is turned all the way down to the lowest setting. And the other important thing is, is that you turn up your throttle channel travel to the maximum setting. Um, on some radios it's called EPA, which is endpoint adjustment. Sometimes this is called travel. On some radios, the max setting is 100%. On some, it's 120%. Some, it's 150%. But regardless of what your radio is, you just want to make sure that, that your throttle channel travel is fully maxed out before going through calibration. So we will walk you through a calibration on this particular Hobbystar ESC that we have in our ProLine ProMT that we're building here in the shop. I'm pretty excited about this new truck. Uh, we, we do have the pinion gear removed from this motor. That's not a bad idea to always remove the pinion gear. Um, sometimes if you do something wrong, it's possible that the truck can take off on you on the bench. So again, 
just a safety procedure to, to pull out the pinion gear. Um, so first things first, you always want to turn on your radio. On the Hobbystar ESC, we're going to press and hold the set button and power it on until the LED light on it turns solid. As soon as we see that, we're going to go full throttle, wait for the motor to beep, confirming full throttle. Go straight to full brake and the same thing. We're going to wait for the motor to beep and then we're going to let it go to neutral. And that's the final confirmation. So on the Hobbystar ESC, then you power it off and turn it back on. And now the ESC works as it should. A couple of important points when doing calibrations. Uh, first of all, when you're going from, say, full throttle to, to full brake, it's important that you do it quickly. Don't pause at neutral at all. You want to make sure that you go from full throttle to full brake. There is a time limit um, within the ESC programming when you're doing this, so it's important that once you start calibration, you go through it quickly. As soon as you get the confirmation, go to the next point. Like I said, make sure you don't pause in neutral. That's kind of a common thing for some reason. It's kind of tendency to stop at neutral for a bit, but don't. You just want to go full throttle to full brake, and then from full brake, you just want to let it go and go into neutral. And one other important point is we'll sometimes get an email from a customer that installs a new ESC and they're frustrated because they say that the car is going much faster in reverse than it is forward. Uh, some radios you actually need to reverse your throttle channel before you calibrate. Uh, most common radios for that to happen with is Fataba radios, Fly Sky radios. On those guys, if you don't reverse the throttle channel, you'll get just that. You'll, you'll go through calibration, you'll go to drive the car and it goes kind of slow and then if you happen to go in reverse, you'll notice that the thing goes crazy fast in reverse. So if you go through calibration and it doesn't seem right, that's one other thing to try, is try reversing that, that throttle channel on you. Well guys, hopefully with this video we've been able to explain to you exactly what ESC calibration is and why it's important to do whenever you have a new speed control. And again, if you ever change your radio, or even if you change your throttle trim setting, it's important that you go through calibration again. It's not a bad idea to maybe sometimes write a note somewhere. I, I've actually, in the past, I've actually written a calibration procedure to a specific ESC on a piece of paper and put it inside, like my battery compartment on the radio, because sometimes when you're out the track, you might need to go through calibration. You forget exactly how to do it. It's a quick way to reference your particular ESC, and that way you can calibrate it and get right back to, to driving your RC car. Uh, if you guys have any further questions, please feel free to email us, support at rcjuice.com. We'll also put a link down in the description down below. Um, and as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.